The Simple Path to God, Discovering the Way Back to Authentic Faith. Father Spiridon Bailey is a priest of the Diocese of Great Britain in Western Europe of the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia, serving in England and Ireland. On this video podcast, he applies the teaching of the Church Fathers to modern life with reference to the Sunday Gospels. Here now is Father Spiridon. If we want to learn anything, absolutely anything, then we need to find a skilled teacher. This goes for engineering, it goes for martial arts, even being a parent. And the tragedy, of course, we see today is particularly young men growing up without a role model, without a father in the family, somebody home is broken. And young men being raised without that example, without that teacher set before them, a teacher who shows what it means to be a father and be a man. And it isn't enough that we find someone who tells us about the skills we want to learn. We must find someone who exhibits those skills, who lives, who practices the things we want to learn. And all of these things are true of prayer, of the spiritual life. We must find spiritual guides, spiritual teachers. Those who not only have repeated the words, have repeated the words of spiritual teaching, but have ascended themselves the heights of prayer, the heights of the spiritual life, who are able to live out what it is we are looking for, what we are longing for. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit leads us in prayer. There is a a saying amongst the saints, nothing teaches prayer like prayer. It is the Holy Spirit who guides and leads us into the fullness of prayer. But there is so much that we can learn from the saints. The history of the church, the lives of the saints are there throughout the, the tradition and of the history of the church. But there are many living holy saints amongst us today that we must seek out and learn from. And we learn by listening, by watching, by by living out what we have seen, living out, emulating that which is set before us, the example set before us. So let us study their lives, let us study their words, let us let us imitate their lives of prayer. For this is how we learn to pray. And of course, they themselves, the holy saints, learned from saintly elders. It is a living tradition. And we are called to learn that living tradition for ourselves. Let the fire, the fire of prayer catch in our hearts. We must kindle, protect that spark that it begins to grow and that we may burn, be alive in the Holy Spirit and burn with prayer. So let us think then of a few simple examples of the things the saints have taught us. A few simple examples to help us along this road, the teachings they've given. As we long to pray, as we long to draw closer to God. Well, St. Paul tells us of course that we are to pray always, continuously. And by this St. Paul is saying, the the saints and the fathers tell us, this means to constantly have the remembrance of God in our mind and heart, to constantly be aware of God with us, live continuously in the presence of God. But the saints also tell us that there are particular times when we should pray. Now, in our recent time, Elder Ephraim of Mount Athos and Arizona, he taught that when we first wake from sleep, there there is a clarity in our thinking, our mind. After the hours of sleep, the mind is in a certain state that makes it able to draw closer and focus on Christ in prayer. When we first wake, this, this condition of the mind is particularly suitable for praying. 
Elder Ephraim says some very simple practical advice. He says, take a, take a small stool, sit down, and first draw to mind the reality of your death. Think about the reality of the death, that in, in a few hours we may die. That this very day may be the day of our death, and this may be the last opportunity that I take to cry out for God's mercy. This may be my last opportunity to plead to God that he forgive me as I say the words of the Jesus prayer. So he says, bring to mind, let this thought of death be a sober reflection that in a few hours the demons may approach me and accuse me of everything I've done wrong in my life. And this may be my last chance to ask God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And he says to us, even, even if it is only for five or ten minutes, allow these sober thoughts then to prompt us to say the words of the Jesus prayer. Yes, with sobriety, but also with a fervor, with a longing. The reality, the true reality, that we must cry out for God's mercy. We must cling to Christ must cling to the very words of the Jesus prayer. Let this be our, our plea, as though it is our last plea before the judgment. Let us cry for God's mercy with a sense of the truth and reality of this moment. But when we say a sense of truth of the reality, all of the saints, our great holy teachers, have told us not to begin to imagine things, not to even to imagine Christ or imagine the Mother of God, the Theotokos or the Holy Saints. Don't let our imagination begin to bring images or ideas of them before us. It is an act of faith, an act of trust to believe that we are praying unheard by God and that God is there listening. We do not need to conjure up anything with our imagination. And, and in fact, our saintly teachers warn us, never imagine anything in prayer because it will mislead us. It is there in our imaginations that the demons can tempt us with fantasies and false ideas. And this is how we begin to move forward in the spiritual life, in our life of prayer. The sober beginning to the day, whatever time we can find, before the pressures of our day, whether it be family, whether it be the pressures and demands of work, we must cut off, prevent them from attacking us. We mustn't begin to think about the conversations and the tasks of the day ahead. Draw back, make, protect a small time each morning, five or 10 minutes, even if that's all we can manage. But if we do that regularly, it will begin to be the foundation of the whole day. And everything we do for the rest of the day will be coloured, affected, will be, will be built on that foundation of prayer. This is what the saints teach us. This is how we begin to transform not just the whole day, but the whole of our lives. Building in a foundation of prayer into our lives. And of course the important thing is not to outreach, go beyond what we're capable of. Start with something that we can do and can keep. If it's only five or ten minutes, begin with that. Don't start with something that is so far beyond our capacity that within a week we discard it and we give up because we fail. Find something that we can do regularly, frequently, and hold on to it. Let it be a foundation, a framework, a structure in our lives that begins to transform our days. Now, of course, the devil particularly hates this form of prayer. He hates the Jesus prayer. And the devil will throw all kinds of temptations, all kinds of seeds to drag us away, to, to distract us from this even short time of prayer, bombard us with thoughts and concerns, creating us a feeling of lethargy, despondency, creating us a sense of wanting to get on, a sense of rush, but let's push aside, push aside these thoughts, these temptations. 
begin to protect this time if you can find it or you have a prayer rope use it tell yourself don't think about even how much time I've been praying use the knots on the rope to protect the time say to yourself it doesn't matter how long I think I've been here praying or how long I've been I'm going to work through just maybe just 30 maybe just 40 however many times but just work through that single line of knots let that structure and protect the time to allow peace to rest so you are defended from distracting thoughts of, of time and rush on the rest of the day. The devil hates this form of prayer. And if this reality alone doesn't spur us to pray more like this, then nothing will. We must push all temptations aside when we pray. Remember, before we pray to the holiness of our teachers, these saints, these elders, these fathers who have lived before us, and yes, they, they live in this world even as we live. We know when we encounter saints, their holiness, their way of life, their love and their gentleness. It touches something in our heart. Let us call to remind this holiness because the road to holiness is the road we are called as Orthodox Christians. Orthodoxy is the road to sanctification. Orthodoxy is the road to holiness. Orthodoxy is the bride of Christ. Orthodoxy is the only way we find the fullness of truth. There are many Christians, very devout and very pious people, who long for God, but they are outside of orthodoxy. And it is heartbreaking to know that whatever they do and however pious they may be, they can never find this fullness of truth outside of orthodoxy. There are glimpses, there are aspects and shimmers of truth throughout the Christian world. But this fullness of Christ, the very reality of Christ, is only to be found in orthodoxy. And it is only in orthodoxy that we find these truly saintly, holy teachers. And it is only in orthodoxy that we may receive this teaching and walk for ourselves this life of prayer and this road to holiness. The Simple Path to God discovering the way back to authentic faith. Father Spiridon Bailey is the author of several books, including Orthodoxy in the Kingdom of Satan and Journey to Mount Athos. You can email Father Spiridon at simplepath at ancientfaith.com. That's simplepath at ancientfaith.com. This has been a listener-supported presentation of Ancient Faith Radio.